处Just like a muscle issue, is it? I mean, I'm not really. Yeah. I I can't say yeah or nay to that. You know, I mean, right. that is your your rear delt right there. You yeah. know, rotator cuff right there. Yeah, no issues there. I think mean, the issue is just don't ever do that again. Yeah. You know, I would stick away. I mean, I don't know. Overhead pressing the meat for me was a big no no in anything. You know. Mm -hmm. And once I stopped overhead pressing and a couple other things, I took it out of my programming for a while, you know, okay. and just did like shoulder lateral raises, you know, a yep. certain way. And my shoulders stopped hurting, they started growing, and yeah, just the overhead presses is, you know, unless your shoulders are super heavy. And you're really strong in that position. Not worth it. I don't know. I mean, that's to me, it's not. But I'm right. not, that's I don't know everything. And but just with myself, that was one thing that I learned along the, the years. Just finally, even like with the bench, just like my, my body didn't like the bench. My ribs are twisted a little bit. So <laughs> I have dumbbell presses. I can do those. You know. No, I'm, I'm also kind of your working space, right? Your your where can you work at? It'll still be safe, you know. So bring your bring externally rotate your arm once. No, keep it on the just keep it on the table and just bring your hand up like this here, just like you're gonna do an all red press. How far can you bring back? I can bring it back pretty far. Without compensating here, though, keep your oh. Keep this down, now bring it back, right there. 
you know, so that's not even behind your head. Yeah. So then what you have to do is you have to compensate here by moving the shoulder back, you know, but... Oh. So I wouldn't even go anywhere close to here. I would, right. you know, yeah. I would stop about right there, you okay. know. So pushing up in that range. I see what you're saying. You know, yeah. don't go to, to where you can barely go. You know, you're not right. very strong here. You're really unstable in this position here. Right. So you can create a little bit more stability right here and push up that yep. way. So it's just a little bit more than an incline press. But even then, you know, it's still kind of watch out right. for that, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, tears and strains, you know, there can be bruising and bruising and, you know, um, really bad pain, you know, immobility. So it sound, it seems like maybe, because when did it happen? Uh, about two or three months ago. Oh, okay. So it's not fresh. No. It wasn't a tear because there was no bruising, right? Right. No swelling or anything. Nope. But it's been bothering you ever since. Correct. Well, and what exercises does it bother you on? Any, everything else? Uh, or bench just... press, uh, lateral raises, uh, lateral raises too, huh? incline bench, uh, yeah, pretty much anything where it comes to pushing, pushing, yeah. Lateral raises aren't pushing, but, um, yeah, um, that's like the one thing where I can do where it doesn't hurt as much. It would be interesting to see how you do your lateral raises too, because you're probably doing a little bit of external rotation is what's happening when you're doing them. Uh, I don't use dumbbells. The, I, they have that at Bose Black, they have a couple different isolation machines there for you to do lateral raises with. Okay. Um, they have a lateral machine raise there, so it's... The one you sit in and raise your... Yep, I do that, and then there's also a standing one too. The, the rogue one? Yep. Could maybe try and work with dumb dumbbells for a little bit. Okay. Don't go as heavy. Maybe higher volume. Right. A few times a week. And just practice on the form. Yep. And make sure you're driving with your elbows, not with your hands, right? It's, mm -hmm. and, and one thing that, well, that's really common with people when they do lateral raises, they do, they, 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 you know, they, they come out and they go like this. External rotation, that they're doing this here, really. Right. right? All the lateral raises is just mm. pump, boom, pump them. Just pump them. High volume. Oh, get those delts filled, del delts filled up. That's all you need to do. Make sure you right. keep your hand down below your elbow. Don't let your hand come above your elbow. So if you're looking in the mirror right now, your hand would be above your elbow right now, right? right? Yep. So see how it's here now? Mm -hmm. So now we get a little, we get more of the rear delt mm -hmm. engaged, right? Because right. here, the rear delt's kind of taken out of it. But if we go here, even then I can see your rear delt is it's more flat here. It's more level, you know? Right. The, the shelf here, so. I don't even hit the I don't even hit the weights anymore. Oh really? Mm. You just kind of fell off it, or? Well, my body, Change. my body's, my nervous system is shot. Yeah. Weights are pretty stressful. I don't know. There's just there's a lot that happened in the gym the past few years, so kind of like a trigger for me too. Like my heart and stuff is weird with like weight training. Cardio is different, you know, but the the constant up and down of the heart rate with um, the weights mm -hmm. and the pressure of it. it. It feels really weird sometimes, you know? Okay. With steady state cardio, you know, you kind of just keep the heart rate up, you know? And right.
still have a lot of clients you deal with, or? No. Just kind of gave up, or uh, just did it different? Slow down. Slow down, that's it. Slow down a lot. A lot. I burned myself out. Yeah, dude, I know you were, like, working like crazy. Mm -hmm. I always, I would keep up with you on social media. I'm like, oh, this dude's fucking a madman. <laughs> yeah, it only can last for so long. Yeah, dude, before you get completely burnt out. Mm -hmm. You don't really see it coming, though, because you're just so... Everything is just working so well, you know. Mm -hmm. It's hard to, to to sleep because it's every every moment of the day is growth, and mm -hmm. you know, is an opportunity, you know, yeah. for growth and to go. And it's just like you just stop taking care of yourself and you overwork yourself, and next thing you know, you can barely you can't even function. Your body just starts shutting down. I guess I haven't st started getting the shakes. Oh, damn. And I haven't stopped. The shakes haven't stopped now for like a month. Every day, all day now. So you went and get it checked out, got it checked out at all? I've been to a couple of doctors. Yeah. Because they, they were coming and going for a couple of years, you know? and like. Mm -hmm. But now they've started and they haven't stopped. really weird like I have, I have a lot of muscle spasms and basically too is a diet a doctor diagnosed me with Lyme disease oh my um, God, dude. last October a year ago Holy shit. like it's it's a really hard thing to kind of understand and comprehend because it normally like like if you're in the beginning stages of Lyme disease you get bit by a wood tick it like yeah. you have a rash or you get really sick, you get a flu, you know, so then you can be like, oh, well, like, I'm sick, I got bit, I have Lyme, you know, you go get right. tested, and then the FDA-approved tests that they have are really inaccurate, you know? Mm -hmm. But if you don't, sometimes someone can get bit by a tick and not have those symptoms, <clears throat> and, and actually not really have any symptoms for a while until they go through, until their, their nervous system kind of, an immune system gets tested, you know, it gets kind of stressed out or your immune system gets weak because the Lyme virus does never go away. Mm -hmm. It just, your body just builds up immune immune cells, immuno cells or whatever you want to call them, to the virus and it keeps them at bay. Right. That's what your immune system does is it builds up cells to fight off these viruses and not to get rid of them but to put them in a, basically in a jail cell, right? Mm -hmm. So your body is holding on to all these viruses and the, the immune system is holding them at bay but then when your immune system crashes, like you go through a, a tra really traumatic experience, like big job loss, divorce, like whatever it is, they say what happens is that the Lyme disease will come out and you'll start having all these crazy symptoms on top of oh, yeah. the stress and trauma from the event, you know? And I think that's what happened with me is that because I started having really bad fatigue um, at some point on top of the burnout, you know? I mean, I get done with a session, you know, and any chance I could, I just lay on the ground, you know, and like the door would close, the client would be gone, and I just fucking collapse <clears throat> onto the floor, you know. I did that for quite a while. But yeah, a year ago, I had a doctor that diagnosed me with the Lyme disease, and that means I've had it for, I mean, since 2012, is when I remember I got bit by the wood tick the last time, and um, I never got it treated, you know, because I never really, it never took me out. I never had to. I was able to keep going and function. I was just in a lot of pain. That's one symptom of Lyme is like arthritis everywhere, you know? Mm -hmm. Like everywhere, you know? And I thought it was just the pain was just from like training really hard all the time, you know? But looking back, it's like, no, it was from probably from the Lyme, but. <clears throat> and then there's different types that can attack different parts of your body. Like, like one is neurological Lyme. Mm -hmm. Um where it attacks your nervous system. I think that's what's happening right now is that, uh, I don't know. 
it's just a really stupid thing because there's not a lot of people that even believe in it and then there's a lot of ignorance around it and misunderstanding and <clears throat> especially within myself because it's like I mean I'm sure you've gotten really sick before to where oh, you just yeah, like yeah. could barely function and do things yeah. you know you lay in bed all the time and you get better you're like alright let's go you know yeah. Back to weight training, feeling good, your body's responding good to training, you're sleeping, you know, you have an appetite. What happens when things like this happen, it's like, you don't get better. You just have to learn how to deal with it. Like, you, you stay, basically, you just stay sick. And you can't, it doesn't really ever, it hasn't really gone away yet. And so you just kind of have to learn how to, like, function feeling like this. That's not fucking fun life. <laughs> no, I'm not, I just, I, that sounds horrible. And, and then, and then it's hard too because people that have never been in these shoes, they see me functioning and doing things so they think that I'm fine, you know? Right. And, but we're really, it's, it's, they have no clue how hard it is on top of just regular life stresses to, to, I mean, I wake up every single day laying in my bed for like an hour or so, like just sick to my stomach. Just like. I used to, you know, wake up fucking 4 a.m., go to the gym, put my feet on the ground, do a little celebration, go, go weight train, you know, and just be ready to take on the world feeling, feeling really good, you know, but now I wake up and just every day, it's just like, oh, dude, it's, it's so different, it's so weird, it's, you just feel sick all the time. And, but I'm built, you know, I don't know, I've made some... And my heart is kind of weird too, though, you know, because they say it can affect the heart too, like Lyme, Lyme carditis, I think is what it's called. Okay. And I have really bad sleep apnea too that developed oh, probably shit. through some of the choices I've made, you know. Mm -hmm. And sleep apnea is really hard on the respiratory system and the cardiovascular system. And I'm really feeling it in that those areas, man. Like, my sleep apnea has gotten better. I got a turbinate reduction. Um like therapy or surgery, I don't know what you'd call it, therapy, I think, on the nose, where they go in and they they shrink the turbinates mm -hmm. and move them over so you can breathe better through your nose. And so I think that's helping my sleep at night. Because there was a while there um, where I was having panic attacks every single night. I mean, and I'd have a couple of them sometimes. You wake up and your heart's just going, you know, fucking pounding through the roof like you're fucking sprinting or something. You just woke up from a dead sleep. Your heart, and then you sit there for, I don't know, 15, feels like an hour, feels like forever, you know? Right. But 15, 20, 30 minutes maybe, and your heart just is racing. And then finally, you know, you try to breathe, you can't do that. Like, there's nothing that really can really stop those panic, atta panic attacks sometimes other than just kind of riding them out. <sighs> and so it's just been really hard for me mentally. Went from having a really successful business to, you know, things were just working every day. Things were yeah. awesome and amazing. And I was able to handle it to really not, I don't know, man. Like, my life is good and I'm thankful for it. Don't get me wrong, you know, but right. it's, I mean, it's hard, man. It's hard out here, dude, sometimes. It's yeah. hard for everyone, you know. And, like, when your health is not that good, it, it, life is just that much harder, you know. And, mm -hmm. It's good though. I got it. I can handle it. I'm here still, right? Yeah, you are. Do you ever foresee yourself trying to get, getting back into like the gym, or is, is this something that's got to get figured out medically first before you can even dabble in that field again? Um, I don't know, man. My body just my body feels weird, dude. I don't know. I want to. I. It's not hard for me. I know what to do, man. I've been doing it for 20 years. You know. Yeah, of like, course. <laughs> Your beast. I'd I'd love to be able to just go, do it like it's dumbbell presses and some rows, you know, and a leg press, you know. And, mm -hmm. But like I said, it's just the the getting the pressure up in my heart is, and then it, when it drops, because when you weight train, when you lift, uh, you know, during a set, your blood pressure goes up, you know. Mm -hmm. And then when you put the weights down, your blood pressure goes down, but your your nervous system kind of regulates how fast it drops, and you know. And so it feels like my nervous system isn't doing a very good job of handling the, the change and the shift in blood pressure mm -hmm. as fast as it happens. 
And so then my heart has a hard time kind of understanding that. And like my resting heart rate doesn't go down after a set, like it, nor, like it normally should, like everyone else. I've been training people for a really long time. And like, if I had someone in my condition and I was training them and measuring their heart rate, I'd be like, bro, you should go see a doctor or something. I don't think I can train you like this, you know? Right. I just don't feel comfortable because my heart rate is really in irregular and... So, I mean, yesterday I rode 15 miles on my bike, you know, oh, like a decent pace, like five minute, 30 second. And that was because I s stopped for a while. So, I mean, and I rode up a hill, a couple hills really good. Yesterday I was just kind of in a place where I was like, fuck it. I'm so fucking sick of of being scared or to die, mm -hmm. you know. And that's honestly how I felt yesterday, you know. Because mm -hmm. that's what it is. I'm 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 afraid to die, dude. Because oh, yeah. my heart's gone into V-fib a couple times. You oh, know what that shit. is? I've heard of uh, AFib, but yeah. I've never heard of VFib. AFib is like, I think it's just really irregular and really just random, just, just random stuff. VFib is when it goes really fast. It goes like oh, that. Damn. It goes out of control, basically. And so my heart has done that, I don't know, probably, I think five times it's happened in the past year, or maybe less, less than that. Where you're like, you're just sitting here, like doing, you know, just sitting, doing nothing eating or something and all of a sudden your heart goes and you're just about to like pass out no because what's what they think what they say i could be wrong on this too but what it feels like is it feels like the blood stops pumping and my heart's just spasming out you know yeah. like there's not blood flow there and the last time it happened was like probably two months ago now and then it, i ended up going to the er one night and that night that I sat on the toilet and as soon as I sat down on the toilet it did it did it you know and so yeah, fuck and the EKG what did that say they don't ever say anything dude EKGs oh, really? yeah all the cardiologists all the EKGs all the emergency room specialists they all say there's nothing wrong they say that my heart's what? just fine there's no enzymes of the heart you know nothing and that's where so then, then that's where like the Lyme disease stuff comes into play because that's a really common thing with people who have symptoms of Lyme. Mm -hmm. They have these symptoms, these things happening, but they go in and see these specialists and the specialists all say that everything's fine. There's nothing showing up on, on our tests, blah, 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 you know, we did, you know, and everything's fine, but it's like, but okay, right, you're looking at your computer screen, look at me in my eyes, look deep into my eyes and hear me, listen to me. Something's going on in my body. Right. Your computer is not catching it, you know, whatever it is. And they don't know how to handle that. They, they're just like, well, the computer says you're fine, so you're fine. You know, it's... Yeah. So... It's been a crazy journey, you know, and... Um, I was just talking about that this morning on my Instagram, just about how I wake up every day for... You know, it feels sick to my stomach every day. You know, you do the dry heaves, like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, trying to brush your teeth. Uh, look at yourself. Uh. Mm -hmm. But the one thing, and I, you know, I think it's a, it's a, it's a test, you know, of my sp spirituality, you know, oh, yeah. strength you know, learning and growing, you know, through something like this, getting me closer to God yeah. and just getting a better understanding of it, you know, it is, it's been hell on earth, bro. I'm telling you, man, I've been to the ER probably 10 times in the past year, you know, Oh my God. I mean, and that's just, you know, going like right. three ambulance rides. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of panic attacks in the middle of the night. You wake up, and I, you know, grab my phone and I start freaking out because I don't know whether to call. I don't know whether to call nine one one, or what to do. You know, because mm -hmm. it just feels like your heart is just you're having like a heart attack. You know, basically, and that you're gonna have one. You know, right. So then I start making, you know, I start reaching out to people, you know, I don't really know who to say. You know, so I make like Facebook posts sometimes and Instagram posts and they've been getting me in trouble. 
for just asking for advice or maybe well just like, just re just kind of reaching out mm -hmm. like just saying hey i need help i'm scared i feel like i'm dying <laughs> why does that get pray you, for me how does that get you in trouble uh just because it makes you look like uh like you're just crazy and like you have a lot of mental problems you know oh that you know and really at the end of the day it's just because yes I'm, I'm developing some big anxiety and depression because of it but it's like you're, i'm sick and the sickness just hasn't gone away and it's not getting treated very properly right you know so of course it's going to drive anyone crazy you know yeah That's and you know then people are afraid that i'm like going to kill myself like hurt other people or something like that it's like no it's like i don't want to die <laughs> like you got this completely wrong yeah <laughs> i'm reaching out for help and that's the one thing i think i've learned about mental health is that it's hard because people do reach out for help and then when they do reach out for help sometimes those people will use it against them they don't it doesn't always mean every time you reach out for help that everyone's going to come around you and start hugging you and be like oh we love you you got this you can do it sometimes there's going to be some people out there that get are confused and they they don't know how to handle it you know it's not their fault right they just it's just their natural reaction they, you know if they went through it maybe they would respond in a different way but it's just something that they've never experienced and you know they just don't know how to react and then all of a sudden they just you know i don't know they just don't do it in the right way and they're scared you know obviously mm -hmm. but But then there are some people that are waiting in the grass. They're waiting for you to have something like that happen so they can justify their hate for you, you know? Oh, man, I hate people like that so much. You mm -hmm. have no idea. Like, I, I deal with that shit, too, so it's... It's, it's the, the darkness of the devil or whatever it is, you know? He, he's waiting for you to slip up, for you to be vulnerable and something to happen, you know? Mm -hmm. And... And you don't even realize that. No. Nope. Like I said, it's it's just so crazy. So this so this journey has brought me a lot closer to God and to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And um, I've never been a big believer, a big follower. I'm not. No, I didn't grow up in any churches. I don't claim to be any sort of religion. I don't really know what to say when people ask me, like. You know, I don't, not that it's a bad thing to be a part of a church. I think sometimes I have to be careful because I don't want anyone to think that is involved in a church or is involved in religion right. that what I'm saying, I'm not involved in religion or I'm not coming from a religious or a church standpoint that I'm not trying to knock religion and knock the churches. That's not what, just my own experience with things is that I didn't find God in a church. I've been going to churches like Eagle Brook for a long time, you know. And, like, right. I've seen signs and I've seen things, you know, but that's not where I found God, you know. Mm -hmm. That wasn't my spiritual experience. My spiritual experience was in the fucking hole. It was in the darkest time of my life, you know. I saw Jesus carrying the cross one night in my sleep. Like, it was a dream, and that's what I saw. Wow. Like, it was crazy. And I just, and I don't really know, know the Bible very well or n n I'm not very educated on spirituality in that sense, in the formal right. education side of it, I just have my own experiences and the signs that I've seen. Yep. And and when you pray and you and you see and you and you see and you hear your prayers or see your prayers be answered, that gives that's where a lot of people authentically believe in God is because they've prayed something in the past and it manifests and it, and it yeah. manifests right. Yeah. And then, but it's also happened multiple times. Right. So they see them praying, and then it happens, you know. But it doesn't happen for everyone, you know. And so that's a big that's a big way, like why a lot of people are so spiritual and they push God so much is because they've seen these signs and these things happen, you know. Mm -hmm. And then they also, yeah. So, but then I had a really crazy experience with Jesus um, a couple of weekends ago at the river, okay. and I just my life has just kind of taken a turn for the worst and um you feel really alone and kind of society kind of you know stones you or puts you on the cross you know like yeah. judges you but <clears throat> who was also on the cross you know jesus was right there next to you know was it the the roman guard yep and then who else was on the cross next to him there was three of them yeah uh, 
Uh, it wasn't the tax collector, was it? Mm, I, I, it's been so long. But something up that alley. The, you know, Jesus was sent to this earth by God to to tell me that I'm, I'm, it's okay that I love that He loves me and that mm -hmm. God still loves me even though He made all these laws. Because that's what God did when He created Earth. He made moral and physical laws, right? Like yep. gravity is a law, the law yep. of gravity, right? The law of how a tree blooms, like those are all laws in a way, right? The tree right. has to, this this happens, you know, every single time. It's a law, you know. Uh, the way that the water flows, you know, like how the water evaporates, like that's a law, right? The law right. of evaporation, right? So there's there's those kind of laws, but then there's also, that was created when this earth was created, there's also these laws of moral values and human beings, you know, like this, the law of, like adultery, you know, what happens if you commit adultery? There's a law, it's, and, and, and the reason why people believe in that is because it's been happening and documented since the beginning of time, thousands and thousands of years, Right. that when someone committed adultery back in the day, this is what happened. And they've seen it happen time and time and time and time and time and time again. You know, we're not yeah. the first humans to go through this stuff. You know, right. when you steal, there's a law of, of how people are going to act and how it's going to make them feel. There's laws in that way, right? Yep. And so I'm just kind of learning about that stuff, you know, I'm just kind of seeing that stuff in, 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 in person. So, I don't know, man, it's crazy, but I just... And then there's these people that say with Jesus that he'll reveal himself to you at some point, right? That kind of, that's what they say. I just actually just heard that today, how Jesus will kind of like reveal himself to you. And then like, I never really, I think I've heard that before, but I never got it. But that happened to me a couple of weekends ago. And I was just like, Jesus like sat down with me at the river, man. I was alone. I was like crying, dude. I was literally that like ready to just let the river just kind of take me away, you know? Yeah. Just whatever, you know? And it was at that moment that, like, I just felt this presence of something and said, dude, like, come on, man, like, you're all right, dude. Like, you're you're in a really hard spot, and, you know, a lot of people hate you right now, but I love you, and, and that's kind of just, I don't know, it was just like a weird experience, man, and it, it was cool in a way. And, and I don't try to push my... I'm not trying to convert anyone or right. I just talk about my own experience with it and, <laughs> and it does help me feel better, you know, at the end of the day. And yeah. I think that's what matters most is what my experience is with it and how it's kinda of making me feel and, and I can just talk about it, you know, and that's crazy. Yeah, man, I can uh this year's been the worst year of my life too. It's it's, it's uh I work at HCMC there, mm -hmm. and uh, I've been there for like five years, and uh, I was there when they brought the fucking Burnsville guys in, when they were all shot the fuck up. Really? Yeah. It was, they were like, they, we need people to help do compressions on the stave on them, and I go in there to help, and then one of them's already got their fucking chest cracked open, so I was like, well, can't, can't do that, mm -hmm. can't help there, and then shortly after that, I was there when... With the MPD guy that got shot 